They always say the third try is a charm. Well, we'll see if we get through it this time. I'm going to tell the story about my little red point and shoot and the extra batteries that I have because these were a gift. And the story goes back to the time um, of South Tube 3, which was in Chattanooga. It was my first South Tube. I don't know what was wrong with me for the first two, because I certainly probably could have gone, but I didn't. I think I was shy. But anyway, I digress again. It was at the end of South Tube, and the only people that were left were myself, Yo-Yo Max 12, that's Tammy, and Gigi, ABQ double G. And we decided, um, before we went to the airport, to go back to the Chattanooga Choo Choo and explore there a little bit more, plus go to quite an interesting little gift shop that was there. And then we went for lunch. And the place that we went for lunch was um, attached to where the Chattanooga Choo Choo is. And it was a very old-fashioned, old-type um, restaurant that was part of a hotel an old one, very classic, very elegant, with um, great big high ceilings and marble, um, marble facades and walls and and big open spaces. You know, very, very old and kind of nice, with pillars and posts and all in marble, and was very nice. Anyway, we decided to have lunch there, and. Being women, you know, you always have to check out the bathroom. And no, this isn't, well, I suppose it is another bathroom story. But it's nothing like the High Museum shiny floors. Um, maybe it is. Not quite. But, you know, it happened in the bathroom. That would have been a good title. Anyway, we're all three in this bathroom area where they had, um sort of, well, there was there were chairs, there were soft chairs and couches and whatnot, and an area where it was just a great big huge mirror on the wall with all of these ornate um, curved, carved things and whatnot, and big high mirrors and marble, and the floors were all marble, and the bathroom area where the toilets all are was a row with wood doors that went up to the ceiling. It was really very elegant. And this area where they had the mirrors was clearly a place where women would go and fix their makeup. I guess. Anyway, there was also an entrance area into this area. And we were all sort of intrigued. I guess we don't get out much. I don't know. But all three of us were kind of intrigued by the elegance, the old elegance of this bathroom. So we were all three taking pictures, and there was this chaise longue by a window opposite a mirror and another sort of couch type thing. And as we were finished and about to leave the bathroom to go and have our lunch, um, we decided to take some pictures in there. And we were, you know, I mean, we were fooling around and laughing and whatnot and enjoying this experience. And um, I wanted, every, each one of us wanted to have the same shots on our respective cameras. So um, I took a shot of Gigi and Tammy, and Tammy took a shot of Gigi and me, and Gigi was going to take pictures of, of Tammy and me with all of our different cameras. So I gave my little red camera to Gigi, who proceeds to tell me that she doesn't do well with little cameras. Very often, she drops them and they break. Well, this was South Tube 3. I had just purchased that little red camera, and, well, it's not polite or right to love an inanimate object, but I loved my little red camera. I don't care. I'd trust Gigi with my life. I give her my camera. Tammy and I pose on this chaise longue, and we're all laughing and joking, and I'm watching Gigi across from us take our picture with my little red point-and-shoot camera. And all of a sudden, 
it jumps out of her hand, flies across the room, the back end of the camera where the battery goes, down here, pops open, my battery flies out, and I look at her in horror, and she looks at it in horror, thinking that she had broken, destroyed, my little red point and shoot. And she's all upset, and I'm trying to not be upset, upset because I love Gigi more than I love my camera, and I didn't want her to be upset, because clearly it wasn't her fault. It was the camera that flew out of her hands. Arbitrarily. I don't know if you can see the little ding in it. No, the lighting is... Well, maybe... No. No, you can't. There's a little ding in it. Anyway, we both... Tammy's just sort of big-eyed, and, and we both go to the camera, and I scoop it up, and Gigi's just apoplectic. And I put it all back together, and everything's working just fine. It's just worked perfectly. Ever since then, I've got a little tiny nick in the red, and this little tiny, this little tiny dent right there. And it created such a fond memory. And whenever I look at this little camera, I think of Gigi because she was so horrified when the camera leapt out of her hands. And because she was so horrified, and she said to me that she'd had three cameras like this, and the replacement for the cameras that she had broken didn't use these batteries. So she gave me the two. These aren't cheap. At least they're not here. And I was sort of delighted. And that's the story of the camera that leapt from my friend's hands, flew across the room, and I got two extra batteries. I hope you liked it. That's it, that's all.